What's up, YouTube, and all you hodlers out there? Let's talk about Doge, some Doge news, some NFT news. Look at some FUD that's being spread. Now, people keep asking, is Dogecoin, is Doge dead? Dogecoin is far from dead. As dramatic peaks and pullbacks are a normal part of the cryptocurrency cycle, but it's no longer the hot coin. Instead, crypto traders have moved on to the many Dogecoin Dogecoin imitators that have flooded the market in recent weeks, which I believe is not really, really good because um, we're getting all these those you know these altcoins and these sub penny coins sub penny coins are not really a good look at the end of the day uh, I mean I don't think they are I could be wrong but then again I'm not a professional they should be considered entertainment use uh, but in recent weeks we you know we got some uh, NFT we NFT news ethereum gas fees have fallen to their lowest in 2021 with average transaction fee transactions now costing less than one dollar the recent decline in the crypto market has seen Ethereum transaction fall back down to cost-efficient levels. Once again, Sunday saw the average transaction fee needed was just 15 cents for the gas fee. In May, hit a high as market participants enjoyed bullish momentum across the NFT, DeFi, and DEX sectors. However, the recent market correction has um, the, the, the recent market correction that has seen Ethereum drop in price by more than 50% has seen the market overall. Has seen the overall market slow down. The decline in price has hit the market hard as po popularity declines, but the negative price action has played favorably in Ethereum gas fees. The new year, the new year. The new yearly lows in transaction fees means traders can now spend as little as 12 cents to tra on to transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. As recently as February, Bit uh, Finance has reportedly spent close to 10 million in Ethereum gas fees. As the network becomes overloaded, the surge in Ethereum volume and trading transactions saw Binance temporarily suspend Ethereum transactions on the exchange. But it seems those problems are a far cry. Now that the additional decks have been created with much lower fees, such as a pancake swap. Now let's talk about a few things that are um, being spread about what is holding Dogecoin back. Um, like supposed large uh, supply chain. Like uh, like everybody keeps saying like it has a huge supply chain. Like come on, you kidding me? The supply chain's not that big. I mean, if you come over and look on a uh, all right, now if you, I mean, everybody that keeps saying that about the supply cap and that it, you know, really there's a lot. That's that's kind of outrageous in a sense because if you come over and look at the, the circulation supply, I mean, the top one that is up there is this Shibu Inu, which you know I'm not one to talk bad about anybody. I mean, I mean, hey, go, where'd it go? I mean, I don't own any of this coin just because of the name they were coming off of, as you know the. As the 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 uh, those coin killer. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what I support. So that's why I never got involved in it. And also because they got almost four hundred trillion. Now, when you, I mean, that's really if you come and look where the Doge is, where we're at, we're sitting right here at one hundred and thirty billion, which isn't really too bad. I still don't see it being as you know that many. At the end of the day, we're number four on the list. Which you know, at 130 billion, that's not bad. I mean, the next one underneath us is 85, so and the one right above us is at 172 billion, and then the next one, which is the BB BTT, which is like triple, quadruple, whatever the hell we're at, whatever you want to call it. And then I mean, the Shibu, the the show, the the Doge Killer, nah. <laughs> I mean that that is way too much right there. I ain't playing with you. Um, so like when people keep saying that that's what I keep looking at right there that makes zero sense to me because look it doesn't lie I mean it's right here in black and white so like that's like one of the main things that everybody keeps saying is holding it back I don't believe that's holding it back actually I mean, you know myself and even Elon thinks that this is a great this is great that those supply rises by about five billion per year this high supply is often held against the meme coin but has been cited as an advantage by Musk. Doge appears to be inflationary, but is not meaningfully. So mixed 
number of coins per unit time, said Musk in February. Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban also theorized the supply is not a limiting factor. He said any asset that has inflation by definition is infinite, but the, that doesn't diminish it. The billionaire said that the increasing supply chain dodges you the uh, doge utility from store of value to potential potentially a digital currency. It's the fact that they create five billion a year that keeps the per coin price low, which makes it more accessible. Dogecoin's co-creator Billy Marcus said in April that only buying and selling matters for the price. He said the coin's value was absurd to be absurd to it by people such safety much while those coin hash rate is 237.8 while bitcoin hash rate is 97.706 e hash a second a uh, a t hash sec means one trillion coins hash rate is 237.8 t hash a second while bitcoin hash rate is 97.706 e hash seconds as per Bitcoin charts. A T hash sec means one trillion hash per second, while E hash sec is one quadrillion hash per second. The higher hash rate means a greater amount of computing power is is uh, devoted to the maintenance of the blockchain, which makes it more difficult to take over the network or disrupt it, Marcus said in April. That Doge had emerged as one of the most secure coin on the proof of work blockchain. He referred to the coins implement implementation of Ox Power in 2014 as the majority as the moment when it achieved high security. The view of Marcus was reported by um Ox Coin CEO or it was reported by Jason Liu who told uh Benzine that uh Dogecoin was secured by proof of work and has never had any security issues. Never had any security issues. Think about that for a moment. There's not any support going any further. Um if this is your first time tuning in, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Come follow me on Twitter. Um if you don't follow me on Twitter, just I mean you should actually have a Twitter anyway so you get the real news and don't be, you know, fed with all the BS from the from the uh the news and all that and the news outlets because they ain't giving you the, the right news. I mean, after all, I mean, all in all, the market is doing pretty good. We're actually up 1.4 trillion. We're at uh, 1.4 trillion dollars. We're up at almost 7%, which we are gaining some steam today, which is very, very nice. Let's double up for Doge. The release of Doge Coin Core 1.14.3 was announced in February, which brought under the hood improvement for the meme coin. Even so, the lack of a development has been criticized by some who point to Doge's Doge those github page which has not seen much action since 2017 some like vitalik i can't say his name said that there are stable technical uh, factors that limit those coin scaling must too attracted uh criticism from some when he said he was working with the dogecoin developers on its uh, system transaction efficiency last month also that's uh last month uh, Elon Musk, the Dogecoin donated donations helped uh, 63 people financially hit by COVID-19, says Charity. However, it is, it is prematurely to mention that Dogecoin sub subreddit crossed the 2 million mark after Musk called on his social media following to submit idea for the Doge development on Reddit and GitHub in May. Ideas to improve Dogecoin have come from have come from the Cardona. Now looking back at Doge, the 2020 bullish cycle for Doge has had a much higher magnitude and has transpired in less time than the one in 2016 to 2018. Doge initiated its first up uh, upward movement in May 2015. At the time, it was trading at a low of 0 0.000085 the upward movement continued for 973 days in january 2018 a then all-time high price of 0 0.0187 was reached relative to the previous low this announced this announced this uh, this amounted to an increase of 21,000 percent 821 or 21,821 percent Afterwards, a long collective period ensured, which lasted for 798 days. 
It ended with a low of 0.00134 being reached on March 2020. During that time, the door was just 93% of its value. The current cycle, which considerably faster than the preceding one, in a span of 420 days, 420 days, Doge increased by a massive 58,000 or 54,000 percent. This is a rate of increasing more than twice as big as the one in 2016, and acquired in less than half the time. Therefore, the daily rate of increase of increase was more than four times higher than the one in 2016. Now. Let's look at, we have the Dogecoin sees uptick after Elon Musk tweets supporting fee change proposal. This is what I'm waiting for. I want to hear this, and I want our wallets from Robinhood, because we can't do a whole lot until we get our wallets from Robinhood. That's the only one thing I'm waiting for. All right, now let's, uh, all right, we got that there. We also have, let's look at the FUD. We have the banks. Uh, we have a lot of the banks that are pushing back, um, but it's actually pretty good with the banks everybody pushing back, because if you uh, look, and see, I mean, even with everything that's happening, even with Bitcoin, uh, like it, it's so many other small countries over there that are adopting it. There's so many rich billionaires. Yeah, Mexican billionaire urges people to buy it. We also have um, Mexican billionaire uh, Selena says he's banking. His banking business may embrace Bitcoin. He's actually working with a bank where they, they want to start accepting it. Uh, like even with everything that's going on in China, well, we got the banks. Uh, who was it? The one in the UK with uh, bit with Bitcoin. Ri if Bitcoin rises, even that with the UK finance uh, watchdog bans uh, Binance uh, cryptocurrency exchanges over there. I mean, there's so the the only ones that are pushing back are the banks. Everybody needs to understand that banks don't want this to happen because of what can happen. Um, Several, we even got Indian banks have reported halted services to customers dealing in cryptocurrency despite the Central Banking Reserve of India informing them that the banning circulation is no longer valid. That, I mean, that's kind of crazy that people, that they're still doing it even though it's not valid. Now, let's get into the main thing before I jump in and do some uh, chart technical analysis and map out where I believe we're going to be going in the next few days. Uh, all right, let's just jump in and do some technical analysis real quick before we cut this video loose. Uh huh. Give you guys where give you guys and girls where I think we're gonna go, but don't forget I am not a financial advisor. This should be considered entertainment use only before you buy or sell any asset. You should consult with one or help be lazy. Look at the charts, read some articles, listen to some random people on YouTube. You know what I mean? The information's out there. Now this is what I am kind of expecting for us to go. And remember, this is a one day. This is a one day chart right here. So, I mean, we are pretty far out here. And the one thing that I want everybody to realize is we are still in a bearish trend, okay? With this yellow line, which is my 51 day moving average being above the 21 day moving average, it is still a bearish trend. We need this blue, we need, I need the green line to be above the yellow line. But what is the key thing I'm watching is I want to see how this they're going to interact with each other. Now, in order for us to come back and to be a strong bull market, I need these lines to cross each other first. And I need the green, the yellow line to brush up against the 151 day moving average. OK, that's the only way for it's going to work. If, if they cross each other, vice versa, any which way like that, it's going to go on a downward trend and it's not going to end too well. And we will end up coming down and supporting. This is like our major level of support is down here. That's our major level of support. Now everybody's gonna probably be like, "Well, wait a minute, you're, you're giving yourself like what is that? Ten cents, bro? That's like ten, fifteen cents." Well, yeah. Um, you gotta remember. Um, I was just saying that we lost ninety-three percent at one point. So ten per ten cents isn't really. I should actually be going farther down, but I am really, really confident. I am fully convicted in Dogecoin. I understand that. It won't go. I don't believe we're going to go this line. We're going to end up bouncing around on this line right here. If we do get down here and test this, this is going to be the major, major level of support. Now, what we need to be able to break through is we need to actually be able to break through. We need a breakthrough right here. This is what we need to break through in order for us to be back on full bull market. You know what I mean? Because this is where we failed twice before we continue to fall down. And as you can see, we have two other, I mean, technically three other levels of support back over here. And then all this support. So this is what we need to break through. Now, 
I am gonna jump in and kind of show how I am expecting for these lines to how these mo simple moving averages to kind of correlate with each other. Now, remember, like I say, this is not an exact science. This is m but just a damn educated guess at the end of the day because you cannot base, you know, there's no way to un to guess which way these charts are gonna go by looking at previous charts and just previous trends. You can just make an educated guess. Now, like I said, I want this one to come down and cross that 21 day. This is my 51 day, but I don't want it to cross the, the 151 day. I want it to brush along it and then come up and do something like this for us to know we're back. It needs to be able to, to um, we need to see a huge dislocation coming on here. If we don't see a di huge dislocation, and let's say this one just keeps coming and it, it skates along here, it's, it's good and all, it's good and all, but we don't want it to do that because we, you know, that's not what we're going for there because that's not what they, they do. They look at, they rip and then they dip. They dip and they rip. They dip and they rip. That's what it's been doing for a very long time. And since as long as I've been in it, I just can't even get farther back and look at it. Now, what I need my 21-day moving average, simple moving average here to do is I need this guy. I need you. Yeah, this one's going to be a little tricky because you're going to want to keep. Yeah, here he does that. But I need this one to come on down in here, brush up against that one, and break right through that 51-day. The more we're able to get away from the 51 day, the longer we're gonna stay in the bull run. Now, if this 21 day just skates along here, it's gonna be a failed bull run, basically. That's how I see it. That's how I inter interpret it. I could be wrong. If you disagree with me, comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on it. That's what I wanna know. But that's kind of where I am believing for us to take off. That, that's what I'm seeing. Um, but yeah, you can come back and look over here, and that's what it, that's just the, the the nature of the beast. That's what it does. But you see how it's nice and kind of close here, and it just didn't really have that momentum. But here we got away from it a lot, and we were able to continue to run it up, run a muck like that. Now if we're able to get it dislocate like that away from it as far as like we did back here. Then yeah, that's that's a good indicator. Now the other thing I have been looking at is the MACD. I'm not really looking at RSI no more because we already hit a very low on the RSI. RSI basically got maxed out for me. And that was when I started loading up. Now, if you come over and look, the MACD, we're finally getting some green here. That's why I'm saying I believe it's going to be somewhere around July 7th, July 8th. It's going to be in this area right here where we're going to have liftoff. That's how, what, this is my time frame right here for this thing to take off. And if you, I mean, if you're looking at it, that's kind of like what it looks like happens. Now, the only, I don't see any bad news coming out that's going to make this go, go south any which way. Um, honestly, I don't. I mean, if you're on Twitter, I'm on Twitter all the time. The investor settlement is through the roof. Like, the Doge Army, they're very confident, very confident. Not confident, we're confident that this thing is going to make it through it. And if you're against it, and if you're trying to short it, that's not very smart. That's that's you shouldn't be smart any of these assets. Now, like I've said before, I'm not trying to pick any one over any other one. I just look at numbers black and white and that's what I base it off of. And I ba I like the Dogecoin. That's why I'm in it fully. And that's where I'm at with this one. So, you know, like I said, don't forget to come follow me on Twitter at Isaac Trade or on Instagram at Isaac Trade. Comment down below, smash that like if this is your first time tuning in. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll uh, catch you guys at the next video, and holler at me on Twitter, baby. I'm out.